Greetings, everyone. How y'all doing? My name is Ryan. Welcome to my studio. Today, I want to talk about how to see like an artist. What is it about artists that we're just able to see things differently from everyone else uh, and, and perceive reality in such a way that we're able to translate it onto a two-dimensional surface? What is it exactly that we're looking at and how are we looking at it when we are drawing or painting something? Um, now, sculpture, that's a whole other <laughs> uh, topic and something that I am not even familiar with. So this is going to be specifically about drawing and painting, translating a three-dimensional reality onto a two-dimensional surface and making it look real, making it look like it's three-dimensional. Um, how is it that artists are able to see things and, and to be able to do that? Um, that's what I'm going to be talking about. And while I am, you're going to be watching a time-lapse video of this painting right here behind me that I just did uh, recently. So stick around. I hope you enjoy this and I hope it provokes your thinking a little bit. And uh, let's talk about how to see like an artist. All right, so it's story time. So there I am, I'm 14 years old, and I'm sitting in my room one day, bored out of my mind, and I decided I want to draw something. Yeah, that's right. I didn't want to watch TV or play video games or anything. I, I wanted to draw. That's, that's how weird I was when I was a teenager. But uh, anyway, so I grabbed this book, just a random book I had lying around, and I flipped to a page where I see this black and white photo of a woman's face. And when I say black and white, I don't mean a grayscale that had a whole range of values. No, I mean a high contrast black and white picture where half of her face was in light and the other half was in shadow. Well, after looking at this picture for a minute or two, I finally had my aha moment where something clicked and from that moment on, everything changed. I realized I could do a drawing of this face just by drawing the black and white shapes of her face exactly as I saw them in the picture. So I grabbed a piece of paper and a pencil and I did just that. So fast forward to today and I still look at my subjects the same way when I go to draw or paint them. So what does it mean to have an artist's eye? or to be able to see as an artist and translate reality onto a two-dimensional surface in the form of a drawing or painting? Well, it involves a few things. Number one is being able to simplify what you're looking at. Whatever your subject is, you have to be able to look past that and see it merely as a series of shapes. And that's it. It sounds kind of bad, but... <laughs> Anytime I've ever taught students about portrait or figure drawing, I tell them that they essentially have to objectify the model. Yeah, that's right. To literally look at the model as an object. Um, I know, sounds horrible, but that's what it takes. Uh, or, or to be able to look at it, the model as a series of, of, of shapes and then to draw those shapes as you see them. So a face is no longer a face. Forget about that. Eyes aren't eyes, a nose is not a nose, a mouth is not a mouth, and so on. They're simply shapes. Break it down that way. Break it down into shapes. And then after you've captured that, you can start to look at the soul and the spirit of the model and start turning your drawing of a face into a portrait of the sitter. But simplify first move from general to specific and the same is true with a landscape um, when I was painting this scene that you see here I really wasn't concerned about making every rock look exactly as it does in nature or the photo reference I was using I was only concerned with imitating their appearance and uh, and their shapes so that they would look like rocks in my painting and that's really the great thing about landscape painting is that 
I don't have to be as concerned about being accurate or, you know, with proportions or capturing a likeness like I would be with, with a portrait. But like a portrait, I'm moving from general to specific as I use my skills of, of observation to turn these simplified shapes into the things that they represent in the scene. Trees, rocks, flowing water, and so on. So let me give you another example because I think this is a clear indication that every single one of us actually possesses this ability to see like an artist. We do. And ultimately to use that ability um, to learn how to develop our skills in drawing. So have you ever been outside and you looked up at the sky and you look at the clouds and immediately you're able to see some kind of shape in the clouds that represents something else. Perhaps you look at a cloud and it's shaped like an animal or a funny face or something. If you ever have, then you've done basically what all artists do all the time. You've seen past what the actual object is and you've identified its shape. You've simplified it. And if you can do that with a cloud in the sky, you can also do that with a rock or a tree or a person's facial features. So that leads me to the second thing that makes artists see things differently. And that is the way that light interacts with a subject. Now artists know um, a, a good lighting situation when we see it. And, and we know how to situate the light when we can. Uh, in order to make a more dynamic drawing or painting. Now, in my opinion, the best drawings and paintings are usually the ones that have a good balance of light and shadow because it's that balance um, that makes an object appear more three-dimensional in the drawing. And this is why it's more difficult and, quite frankly, it's not in the least bit appealing when you <laughs> when you try to paint or draw from a photo reference that was taken using the flash on the camera. The flash on the camera is an awful way to take pictures anyway. But the reason it's so bad as, as a reference for drawing is because the light source is hitting the subject of the picture head on like a deer in the headlights. So your drawing from said photo is going to end up looking about as flattened as, well, a deer in the headlights. That was bad. Sorry about that. Anyway, <laughs> it's not to say that it can't be pulled off, but I personally don't recommend it. Don't use the flash when you're trying to take pictures for, for a painting or a photo reference uh, for a drawing. But notice how in my painting here that I started by laying in the darkest shadow shapes of the rocks and then proceeded to layer up the lighter values from there. And the same is true for the trees and for this waterfall as well. And that's typically how I build up my paintings, by layering up from the darkest darks to the lightest lights. Um, it's kind of a routine for me. The balance of light and dark gives the painting not only a sense of three-dimensional form, but also the illusion of depth and distance. And so, anyway, let me just conclude by saying this. While I do believe that drawing and painting and sculpting and so on are all skills that anyone can learn and that uh, the ability to see as an artist it really is an ability that we all possess, not everyone is meant to be an artist because being able to, to see and draw is one thing, but being able to uh, have a passion. Being an artist is, is a passion. It's a calling. Um, it's, it's when you know you're good at it and you have the confidence to say, this is what I am good at. Now, I know a few chords on the guitar and I love to play, but I am far from being a musician because, frankly, I have no passion to become a musician. I have no passion to, to follow that path. And being an artist starts with an awakening. Kind of like that aha moment I had when I was 14. 
I discovered something about myself that day that I had this ability to see things differently and that I had a desire to develop that ability and to use it. So the, the artist, Edgar Degas, is attributed with this quote. He said that art is not what you see, but what you make others see. And I guess that's true. You know, in order to, to show you something beautiful, I need to be able to know what beauty looks like and how to capture that. And it's, uh, it's, it's something that I've always thought about, you know, that um, I'm far less interested in talking about my own work as I am in hearing what others have to say about it. And so for those of you out there who have ever given me honest praise or critique, I want to thank you. And I hope that I can continue to improve my skill because, as I've said before, one of the best things about being an artist is that we're never at our best. There will always be an opportunity to become better, and that is probably the most important thing that we can see as artists. So thanks for watching this, guys. I hope this was interesting for you. Take care. God bless you all.